Welcome to gym class students where I hope you came dressed to sweat for success today. I'm Marcus, your inspirational, motivational speaker, a.k.a. Mr. Encouragement, a.k.a. Mark My Words, a.k.a. 120 AD. That means we give 120% all day up in here, right? I figured y'all know that by now. But anyway, let's just get right into it. I got some good stuff for y'all. But first, I got to make a confession. I have a confession to make. Yeah. I'm bad, y'all. Yeah. I'm bad. Because this is what I heard all my life, right? That I was bad. Right? I'm bad. Marcus, you bad. Why? Why, why was I told I was bad all my life? This is what they would say. You bad. Because all you do is pull the good out of people. And as I got older, I kept hearing that. I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad. And then I started to realize what it was they were saying. See, I started to read between the lines. When they were saying, Marcus, you're bad. Because all you do is pull the good out of people. And because all I did was cause problems. And so I said, okay, I see what you're saying. You're saying, I'm bad. Because all I do is pull the good out of people. And now I don't cause problems. I solve problems. Right? Okay. So I wear it as a badge of honor now. <laughs> That's right. And I want to get into this because this is good stuff. Right? That I want you to understand that you too have the goodness in you. That, I, that you came here. See, you came here for one purpose. So that I can pull the good out of you. And that's my sole purpose of being here. To pull the good out of you. Right? So, what happens here is, I want to tell you something. That you have NBA talent. And you look at me like, now you're probably laughing at me. I don't have NBA talent. I'm only 5'6". But you got NBA talent. What am I saying? You and everybody else in this world has a natural born ability. You have a purpose in this life. You have something that you are giving to the world. You have a natural born ability. Right? And in life, there are what we call winners and losers. Some people are winners. Some people are losers. That might sound a little bit cliche, right? It, it is cliche. But I have to keep it simple. I don't want to try to go over y'all's head with too much, right? But I want to show you how you got NBA talent, right? Your talent, well, you were put here not for to gain riches and glory. You see, what I'm asking you to do is part of the attributes system that I talk about in leadership. Is I, I'm asking you to be committed to being committed. Okay? I'm asking you to commit to your commitments. This is an attribute I'm asking you to, 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 to take on as part of the leadership building principles, right? And what we do by being committed to the commitment is I have to check, we want to check what your, your, your PMA, your PMA uh, stat sheet look like. What does your PMA stat sheet look like? Well, I'm talking about your positive mental attitude, right? You want to be committed to being committed. What is your goal? What is your purpose? What are the things that you're doing? What are you thinking about right now, right? What are the things you're thinking about? Are you thinking that you don't have what it takes? Are you thinking that you don't, you don't, you don't have goals that you feel is achievable? Are you setting the bar too high? Because a lot of us, like uh, uh, I heard it said before, that some of us, we uh, it's not that we aim too, it's not that we aim too high and miss, it's that we aim too low and hit every time, every time. So I'm asking you to set small goals, right? Because when you set small goals and you start to see them being achieved then that just takes on a grander scale. You start to see the bigger things come to fruition when you attack the smaller goals. So set the smaller goals because you can. it's easy to commit to the smaller goals than it is to the bigger goal, the one that you think you can't get to. I'm asking you to be committed to being committed. I'm asking you to take your life and place it in your hands and say, you know what? I have what it takes. You have to check your PMA, your positive mental attitude. You have to see what you're thinking about. Here's what I want you to do. At the time of doubt, think what caused that doubt. What was it that brought that doubt in? And what I want you to do when doubt and fear and, 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 and negativity starts to come into your life, I want you to take your right hand or left hand, whichever one you are, take it to your head, 
and go just like this. It might make you laugh, but do it. Go, vroom, take it out, throw it down, like you're breaking a piece of glass, and step on it. And psychologically, you feel a lot better. I feel good already. Just the things that go through my body when I do something like that. It's just like, it's like, it's like beating a wall down with a, uh, uh, a home improvement project. But um, what I'm asking you to do is be committed to your committed to the commitments you make, right? Set the small goals, right? Achieving the small things. And I like to think of it like this here. See, here's how you be committed to the commitment. Zig Ziglar said this, right? He said, uh, he said, uh, he said, don't let your, he said, don't let your nine to five get in the way of your five to nine. What, what he meant by that? He's saying, when you're at work, commit to being at work. And when you're at home, commit to being at home. If you have a family and kids, commit to them. Because like, if you're like anything like me and you, you see yourself getting somewhere in life, all you want to do is work on your craft. All you want to do is work on your craft, get better at doing what, what it is you do. And that's fine, right? But I'm asking you that don't let your work get in the way of your home life. Don't let your 9 to 5 get in the way of your 5 to 9. And the same goes the other way. Don't let your 5 to 9 get in the way of your 9 to 5. Right? When you're at work, be committed to being at work and getting the job done in front of you. Achieving that because when you go home, you got to be with the family. And then, if you're anything like me, get to your work after the family and everybody's in bed. After everybody goes to bed, then you can get to work. And, and, and that may seem like, well, I don't have to. I'm tired. I don't have time to I don't have time to stay up late and work on my craft. I have to do it as soon as I get home. And I'm telling you, is that's kind of backwards though, right? Because as I said before in another video, that we have 16 waking hours. 16 waking hours. And they say you should be committing 12 of those 16 waking hours. to, to not, not, 12, uh, not 12 out of the 16. You should be committing 12, period. To your life after you do eight at work. So what I'm asking you to do is commit to being the, commit to being committed in your life and think of it like this here, right? See, I like to tell my wife. I always tell my wife. I say, don't give me any bad news or don't tell me anything. I can't do anything about physically at work. Why let me have that stress and worry on my mind? If if, if nobody is dying, if there's nobody dead in, in, in an emergency, <clears throat> excuse me. If there's nothing immediately happening that needs my assistance, my attention, then I'm telling you to to uh don't 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 let your work home life interfere with your work life, right? So I always tell my wife, don't give me any news that that I can't do anything physically about while I'm at work. I don't need to have that on my mind because it takes the focus off of it. And when I'm and, and, and when I'm asking you to be committed to your, your life to the, your commitments, I'm asking you to be intentionally focused. Hear me out. I didn't say intense focus. I said intentionally being focused, right? You want to you want to place you want to intentionally place your focus on one project at a time. You want to intentionally see what it is that you have to do and get to work on doing that. If it's spinning, if it's reading a book to your daughter, take the book out and go read to her. If it's if it's cooking dinner for the family, stop what you're doing. Or, or get everything out the way so that you can prepare that meal for your family. You, you get what I'm saying? If you're sitting down to chat with the husband or the wife, sit down and chat with the husband or the wife. Hear, listen to them. Listen to them and get what it is you need to get from them so that they know that you're being there for them. So I'm asking you to commit. If you're married, commit to your marriage. Commit to your husband. Commit to your wife. Commit to that love that you built, that relationship. Commit to them. And here's what, I, what else I'm saying. Not only commit to your work, not only commit to your craft. You see, let me go back real quick. Most people say, oh, well, I'm tired. I can't give all that kind of time. You know, I saw a study that said uh, we operate best off six hours of sleep than we do off eight hours of sleep. Hear me out. They didn't say, now studies show eight hours of sleep is better for you. Studies show eight hours of sleep is more better for you. But studies show that we operate the next day when we only have six hours of sleep. Why? I'm going to give you a, 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 a quick example of why that happens. Because think of, it like a, think of yourself like a computer. When you shut the computer down and you wake up in the morning to go turn the computer on, the computer has to reboot. It has to refresh itself, right? And that's the same way when you get eight hours of sleep. And I got to tell you something. When I get eight full hours of sleep, I wake up more... Tired. I wake up more 
dragging. I wake up more groggy. I, I, I don't like getting eight, four hours of sleep. But although it's good to refresh your body with eight, four hours of sleep. But what I'm telling you is that when you're committed to your commitment, with your craft, when you're committed to the commitment, it's better to operate off of six hours of sleep. Because that's the minimum we need. We need six to eight hours of sleep. And the minimum is six. So I, I operate good. And I probably only, be honest with you, I think I get about five hours of sleep. Seriously. And and I got to tell you something, having only five hours of sleep. My my memory is even more sharper, is, is more sharp than it is when I get eight hours of sleep. I When I operate off of five or six hours of sleep, my memory is sharp. But let me give you that example real quick. Think of it like a... Uh, an hourglass. You got an hourglass in your hand, right? I don't have an hourglass here with me. I wish I did. But you got an hourglass in your hand. And you take that hourglass and right before the sand clears, the last little bit of sand clears the hourglass, you take it and you flip it over. What's happening? That little bit of good, that little bit of sand left at the bottom of the hourglass is still running. You know, that sand is, is still there, right? So what I'm saying is that when you're operating off of six hours of sleep, you still have some, you still have some um, enthusiasm, some energy left over from the, 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 the previous day. And you're able to get up and get going and get started more faster. Your engine is more ready is what I'm saying. So, so when you're operating off of six hours of sleep, there's still some lagging of yesterday's up in your, some yesterday's data still lagged up in your brain, right? And you're still operating off of what was going on yesterday, so you're able to remember much more from the day before. That's why I feel when I get six hours of sleep, my memory is more sharp. I remember things from the day before and the day before that because of the fact that I left a little bit there. I didn't get all, I didn't refresh everything in my head. I didn't fully refresh my memory. I didn't fully refresh my mind, my brain. I didn't fully refresh it. So some things were left over. And that and that got me to get started a little more quicker. But when you get eight hours of sleep, what happens is you got to reboot. And you get up and you don't want to do it. And you're just tired. and uh, Another morning to go to work. You, you get what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. So you want to be committed to the commitment. And you want to do that. You want to do that by by like what uh Dave Ramsey say. He say you live like no one else now so that you can live like no one else later. What he was saying is that sacrifice some things. Sacrifice the uh Louis Vuitton bag and sacrifice the the new pair of Jordans and sacrifice the uh the uh TV time. That's kind of ridiculous to me. People watch so much TV and they're not focused on their craft. Here's what I got to say about that. If, if you're not a celebrity gossip writer, if you're not a celebrity photographer, if you're not a um, if you're not a, a movie script writer or something that has to do with entertainment, I'm not telling you not to watch TV. What I'm saying is you spend so much time on it. Don't spend so much time on watching TV because it really does nothing for you. It only takes from you and you feel actually dumber. And that, I'm not insulting you, but it's true. Whenever I watch TV, I feel like I've, I lost some... um. I lost time on learning something. I love to learn things, right? So I don't I can't learn from TV. And the only time I watch TV is when I'm watching the news, really. Because the news kind of gives me stories that I need to bring you with facts. And I'm not saying the news is true. What I'm saying is I need stories. And I usually search the news for stories. And I usually do that with movies too. But what I'm saying is that if you're not see like my craft, what I do for you, I have to bring you topics. I have to bring you stories. And I'm not saying that I'm not justifying I have to watch TV because I don't watch TV. I watch the news to gain a story or two. I, I read the newspaper more than I do watch TV for the news. And I get stories out of it. And I'm saying to you, commit your life to being committed. Sacrificing some things. Now, how do you do that? I'm going to show you how you do that really quick before we end this. Three steps. You got to have a purpose. You got to have passion. And you got to have make sure it's promising. Do what you do because it has because it's your purpose. It's a purpose, and do what you do because it has and do it with passion. And after you do it with passion, do it because you see something better coming from it. Promise it has promise for a better future for somebody else or for yourself. Okay, so two, three steps, real quick. Do do what you do because it's your purpose. Do what you do because you do it with passion, and do it because it has promise. All right, good. Now remember, dig deeper. To go higher. To live your higher calling and purpose in this life. God bless. Be a blessing. And have a blissful, successful life. Peace out.